Welcome to our review of Quezzle Amazing Cappadocia, a wooden puzzle that offers more than your usual jigsaw. Thanks Unidragon for sending a copy of this puzzle to check out. So normally here at Tabletop Bellhop, we review board games and role-playing games. And this review is a bit of an exception to that in a way, because honestly, we strive to talk about all things tabletop gaming, and really, I don't see any reason we can't include puzzles. Puzzles can be just as fun and as engaging as a board game and make great cooperative and solo experiences, which nowadays puzzles are more popular than ever. So welcome to our first puzzle review. And this is certainly a step beyond your average jigsaw mm -hmm. puzzle, to be sure. Now, quick note on spoilers. We will be as careful as possible to not spoil any of the surprises from this puzzle game during the review. Mm -hmm. Due to the difficulty some people seem to be having reaching the end of the quest, Mo will be offering up some tips at the end of the review. Feel free to skip over that part of this segment if you prefer to figure out things on your own. So Quezzle Amazing Cappadocia, which from now on I'm just going to call Quezzle. I'm not going to say the full name. I'm just going to stick to Quezzle. There's only one Quezzle out there so far, so you know which one I'm talking about. So... Quezzle caught my eye because it is billed as more than just a puzzle. It's actually marketed as a mix of game and puzzle. And tonight, we're going to highlight what sets this puzzle apart from others. They describe it as not just a beautiful illustration and a puzzle of 1,000 pieces, mazes, additional tasks, hundreds of characters, and AR are waiting. So Quezzle was created as a joint venture between Unidragon, who are makers of high-end laser-cut wood puzzles, and IC4 Design. This is a Japanese studio that is listed in the top 200 best illustrators in the world list. It was originally funded in Kickstarter in late 2021, and is now available for sale in over 100 countries. Now, the full Quezzle experience is actually split over four different 250-piece wooden puzzles that feature striking artwork and very uniquely shaped pieces. Now, these puzzles aren't cheap, coming in with an MSRP of $250 US for the full set, though they do seem to be regularly on sale for less. Plus, we've got a 10% off coupon code, which we'll be sharing at the end of the review. Now, while I admit I got a bit of sticker shock from the price, after looking at other high-end wooden puzzles, I realized it's a lot more reasonable than I had thought. It is not a $6,000 hand-cut cherry wood puzzle, but <laughs> it's also not a machine-stamped pressed cardboard $20 puzzle. Yeah, it seems like the puzzle industry definitely has a different price structure than, say, the board game industry that we're usually used to interacting with. Now, Quezzle consists of four laser-cut wooden boxes that each contain a 250-piece puzzle, a stand for holding the box lid, extra shapes that make 3D wooden guardians, and a newspaper-style quest sheet that's specific to each puzzle. When the sets are combined, you get an overall story and quest that spans all four puzzles, and in total, there are 50 tasks to complete with your copy of Quezzle. Now, the final in quest includes some clever escape room in a box style elements, rather well done AR, and six secret mini puzzles, where you're actually taking puzzles from the main puzzle and building separate puzzles. Now, along with this, you also get all the fun of discovering the many uniquely shaped pieces, including the puzzle are things like animals, warriors, airplanes, and even a rocket ship shaped piece. For a look at the quality of the boxes and puzzle pieces themselves, as well as a glimpse at the quest sheets, check out our Quezzle unboxing video on YouTube. So there are a few things I want to highlight here in regards to component quality. First off, the artwork is fantastic and highly detailed, which makes many of the find and seek style quests quite difficult and rather engaging. The actual wooden pieces are expertly cut, like perfectly cut, and fit together fantastically. And we loved finding those unique shapes while building. So this is not made up of your standard, slightly varied tabs and blanks, like a standard puzzle. Now, unfortunately, there are some translation issues on the quest sheets. Thankfully, nothing's indecipherable, but whoever did their localization should have done a much better job. There is actually one actual error in the quest where it asks you to look for four things in one spot and three in another. 
This is, of course, the most disappointing aspect of any game, and sadly an all too common one these days, with games being developed in one country and language, and then spread out across the world with possibly dozens or more translations required mm -hmm. from the original design. Yeah, the Unidragon is located in Russia and their art company is located in Japan. So I don't even know what the original language was here, but I got to say it wasn't English. Now, there is one aspect about the physical design of Quezzle I didn't like, and that's the boxes that the pieces come in. While the four laser cut wooden boxes look great, they're, they're well produced, they've got fantastic artwork on them, they're good for using as your reference while putting the puzzle, there's no way to seal them shut. The lids sit on top. Now, being someone who's assembled a number of laser cut wooden boxes or various box inserts, I don't understand why they couldn't have built some form of slot or latch system in with these. The way these boxes are made, there is no way you can actually stand them up on their sides without the lids just opening. They have to be stacked. And for me, that's a problem in regards to storage. Otherwise, the components are great. This really is a beautiful, well-produced wooden puzzle. Just not a big fan of the box that came in. Now, after thinking about this and looking around, I suspect that this may be something that doesn't bother jigsaw puzzle people generally. They seem to either ditch the box because they preserve the puzzle in a finished state mm -hmm. or transfer their pieces to a more convenient, compact storage solution. Fair. Okay, so good components, dumb box, some language <laughs> issues. Got it. Now, what I really want to know is what I think our fans are dying to know. What are the game elements added to this puzzle? All right. So you start off as expected. You build the puzzle. Now, one neat bit they did is that puzzle one includes a, a bonus sheet, a bonus sheet of puzzle pieces. And what these are is locking pieces. They replace a few pieces out of each puzzle. So they all lock together to form one big solid puzzle. Now, you can build the puzzles one at a time and then do the quest specific to that puzzle or do them all at once and then do all the quests at once. We personally chose to finish them one at a time and do the quests and then save the overall quest for once everything was assembled. So what are these quests? Well, for the most part, sorry to say they're just I Spy, Where's Waldo, Hide and Seek style games, right? Look and see. You look through the puzzle and find the ninja. Okay, look through the puzzle, find the dragon hitch. Now find the chests, etc. Now, each puzzle... Also features a maze, but these are jokes. Like the, these, these are mazes you can solve at a glance. Um, they're childhood coloring book level mazes. That was highly disappointing. I am actually a fan of mazes and I was hoping for something bigger. Now, each puzzle also features a follow of the path based on its guardian, because there's a guardian for each one, which you'll read about in the papers. For example, in the first puzzle, you find the eagle then follow a path from it using small, pretty well hidden arrows to lead you to a sword on the puzzle. Note, at this point, you should not be removing anything from the puzzles. So you're not pulling out those dragon eggs or those stars. We thought we were supposed to be collecting these things in the quests, and doing at this at this point is actually premature. You don't have to take anything out of the puzzle until it tells you to take stuff out of the puzzle. Follow the instructions and don't anticipate savor it yes now one thing that surprised me is that most of the quests were actually the same in each puzzle like i fully expected i'm going to look for this stuff in puzzle one and puzzle two will have completely different stuff but every puzzle you're going to be looking for stars dragon eggs chests a butterfly etc you were looking for the same things repetitively i was actually hoping for more variety and this is actually one of the reasons you may want to wait to finish the entire puzzle before doing the quests that and well they kind of tell you to in a way, they do say step one is to complete the puzzle, but then you can buy puzzle one separate. So you obviously wouldn't be able to do this if you only bought puzzle one. Now, along with these, each puzzle does contain a 3D puzzle, some leftover pieces at the end that you use to build the guardian of that part of the city. These are well-made, and I got to say pretty cool knickknacks when you're done, like neat things to just have on your shelves. In addition, you need these for the final quest, as each one has a code word on them. About that final quest, in addition to the newspapers for each region that comes in each puzzle box, the first box also comes with an extra newspaper sheet for the full puzzle. This is the main quest, and it's actually on the back of the regional paper puzzle. This should not be started until you've done all the other individual quests and will walk you through the end of the game. 
which I've got to say is the best part, the redeeming part about this game. It's here that you start removing pieces for the puzzles and eventually get to what I would call a more escape room style experience where you need to use those guardian figures to move on to the next step, which I thought was very clever. Certainly something more than you get from just finishing a jigsaw puzzle. Exactly. Now, the last thing I want to call out is that this puzzle game also has an app element. At the end of puzzle one, you can scan your puzzle with the app and see a cool animation. It brings the guardian of puzzle one to life. And it's actually surprisingly well done. My kids were really impressed by this. Then when completing the final quest, there are a couple more app elements that add even more augmented reality elements, including having to like punch things in. Sadly, guardian animations for the other three puzzles were a Kickstarter stretch goal that didn't get funded and it doesn't look like they're coming. That gives us a pretty good idea of what you get and how you use it all. What did your family think of Quizzle overall? So let's start with production quality. Overall, this is a, a, a I'm almost going to swear a bit here, a damn nice puzzle. Like, this is really nice. This is, was the most enjoyable puzzle I have put together for physicality. It just fit together so well. And the shapes are extremely detailed. You're going to look at things with little tiny spikes and bits, and they all manage to slot in perfectly. And then there's finding the neat shaped stuff. Like I would say more than half the fun of building this puzzle is going, oh, look, it's a dinosaur. Oh, look, it's like a fighter. Oh, it's a mariachi. Like one of the things that improved this too is they included some simple line art on the back of the pieces. So when you flip them over, they really do look like the thing they're shaped like, right? It adds additional details. You got like propellers on the planes and it differentiates the wings and stuff like that. Yeah, and don't think that this is just some preschool puzzle where you put the bus in the bus-shaped hole. Oh. It is much more complex than that. Yes, though there is some aspects of that, but you're going you're gonna to build a lot of balloons, and there are a lot of balloon-shaped holes. And i got to say that really added to the difficulty. There are so many shapes that were these round curves for the balloons in the puzzle that it's not so simple. Heck, we had a hard time just finding the edges because there were so many straight edges on the puzzle pieces that just because you found a straight edge didn't mean it was an a frame. Now, the artwork here really is awesome and fun to look at. Like, there's just a lot going on. I don't know what this world is, but there's yetis walking around and aliens. And, like, I, I, it reminds me of artwork I remember from, from Mad Magazine, where there was just so much stuff going on. In it. You're going to just discover things that you're going to have missed the last time you look. And this is one of the benefits I found of the hide-and-seek puzzles, is they get you to really look at that artwork in detail. As for the quests, well, I got to say, I wasn't overly impressed. I was hoping for a bit more game to it, but my youngest daughter loved it. She was the one that managed to find all the items needed for each quest and solved the final puzzle. My biggest disappointment, though, were the mazes. Like, I love mazes. These aren't mazes. These are a joke. Personally, the individual puzzle quests are neat. Like, it, it's something you don't get in a standard puzzle, so that's pretty cool. I didn't really find them interesting or fun enough to set Quezzel apart. I wouldn't say, go buy Quezzel because it has a game just based on the, the, the search quest. That said, I will say the overall experience, especially once you get to the main quest, the ending part of this game was quite fun. Playing Seek and Find was boring, but playing Seek and Find to build a new puzzle hidden inside your existing puzzle is just cool. Then realizing that puzzle gives you clue to another puzzle that leads you to, well, wait, I don't want to spoil anything until the end of this review, but the end quest made up for the problems I had with the earlier quests. And as you mentioned, even the parts that disappointed you, your daughter loved. Oh, yeah. My daughter really enjoyed it. My youngest daughter really enjoyed looking for the puzzle. Now, this leads me to the one thing I do think that needs to be talked about a bit more is the price. Puzzle is not cheap, especially comparing it to the hobby board game and RPGs that we usually talk about. $250 US is a lot of money, and that alone is going to remove interest in Quezzel from a lot of gamers. That said, $250 for a high-end wooden puzzle, as Sean mentioned earlier, isn't unreasonable, as you found when doing some research on this. Indeed, while you can certainly get a huge number of puzzles for under $50 or even under $20, they are all more or less the same thing. 
generic tabs and blanks out of some form of pressed card and stamped out with some piece of artwork that's taken from another source or license on it. Now, when you get into wooden puzzles, the price jumps, but even those are often still generic tabs and blanks. What you're getting with this puzzle is wood custom cut along with original art from a well-known art group and not something that's just repurposed from something else. True. Now, there is even, for puzzle people, another step above this, where you get hand-cut wood and limited editions. But those puzzles are in the thousands of dollars, which make this, for the quality and, and interesting designs, actually almost a deal <laughs> in comparison. Totally get it. I, and I have seen puzzle fans going nuts. For this. They're going, going uh, ridiculous for this. Now, the biggest problem I found, above and beyond the stupid box design I talked about earlier, and the price point, is there's no clear direction on what you should do, when you should be doing it, and most importantly, when you're done. As noted, the quest sheets aren't very well translated. And they don't clearly tell you what you need to do to finish Quezzle. I've now talked to multiple people online who thought they were done with Quezzle only to see me share something and realize there's more to their puzzle than they thought. It's due to this that after we finish up the review, I'm going to provide some tips for people who own Quezzle or who are thinking about buying it to make sure they're getting the full experience and don't stop early before the actual finish line. It would be nice to know you could get a whole new experience from a game you thought you were done with. Yes. Though I hope no one sold off their copy first. I do know someone who glued theirs, which obviously was a problem. But before I start, start spoiling things, let, let's get to an overall thought. So overall, I was impressed by Quezzle, despite some initial misgivings. I wasn't sure what to expect when it showed up. And when first starting this puzzle, base tabletop game, I wasn't very expensive, impressed. Yes, physically, it's fantastic. It's a great puzzle. But the quest portion was underwhelming, to say the least. It wasn't until we started to work on the final quest, when we actually had to do some deduction and look for things and put them together in interesting ways, and then got to that end, when we finally saw the words, you completed Quezzle on my phone, that I realized how great an experience the entire thing was overall. My family, in particular, each found something to love with Quezzle. My youngest daughter, as mentioned earlier, loved the quest. She loved finding the various hidden things in the artwork and then building the sub puzzles. She was the one that actually figured out the clue from the Guardians that led to the end game. My oldest daughter, though, was all about building the puzzles themselves. She loved the way everything fits so neatly and actually developed like a technique for tapping the pieces down. She loved the way the pieces were cut and discovering the hidden shapes in the puzzle. How many times her dad, look this, we found this, oh, we found that. Now, my wife loved building the puzzle with my oldest. It was great one-on-one -on -one time with the two of them, and I similarly loved pairing up with my youngest to solve the puzzles once they got them built. If you are already a puzzle fan, I actually can strongly recommend this, recommend Quezzle. It's a great puzzle on its own, and all the other stuff for you is just going to be icing on the cake. Not only do you get a beautiful, well-cut puzzle featuring whimsical pea shapes, you also get the puzzle element on top, which you can do if you want or pass. Now, as for the hobby board gamers out there, our usual audience, I honestly don't know if there's enough of a game here to really interest you, especially if you're not a fan of Jigsaws in the first place. If you're not a Jigsaw fan, you're probably going to want to pass on this. While the final quest was well done, I don't think it alone will win you over. And there's plenty of games out there that are more focused on the escape room puzzle style games, if that's what you're looking for. This is primarily a puzzle with some cool bonuses. Where I do think Quezzle is a perfect fit is families like us, where you've got kids that like puzzles and kids that like seek and find style quests. And you got gamers who will find the overall quest at the end rather rewarding. If your family's anything like ours, you're probably going to have a great time overall with Quezzle. Well, it's, well, that's it for our review of Quezzle Amazing Cappadocia. If we've tempted you at all with this review, we welcome you to use the code BELLHOP, all one word, over at unidragon.com. That will get you 10% off your order.
I also invite you to check out the written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. Now, we welcome you to stick around for some tips for getting the most out of this unique puzzle. All right, so here's the thing. I have gotten a surprisingly large number of people writing me to ask questions about Quezzle based on the content that I've already produced, mostly on social media and Instagram. I guess Instagram is social media. But in addition, I've seen people sharing things, claiming they've solved this, where I can tell they haven't discovered the final quest yet. They've only done the obvious things that are in the boxes. So what I'm going to do here is walk you through the ending of Quezzle. I'll present this in an order so you can listen to it and stop when you feel comfortable and not get the whole thing spoiled. So I'm going to present something, kind of pause for a second. You can then go try to discover that. It's very likely that I'm going to mention the top thing and you're going to be like, oh, I didn't know that. Go discover it and come back later. And for those of you who would listen to the review and haven't picked up Quezzle yet, I do recommend try it on your own first. And then this episode is going to be up on our blog and on YouTube and you can listen to it once you do get to the end. Pace yourself. It's the journey that's the fun part, though the ending is cool too. Yeah. So first off, most importantly, if you haven't seen a screen in the app that says you completed Quezzle, then you haven't actually completed Quezzle. I've shared this screen on social media, and you can see a picture of it on the written review. No matter how much you've done and what you've, you've discovered and what you think you've completed, you haven't seen this, you're not done with Quezzle. Which might be a surprise to some people, but then it's not like puzzle people are used to needing that sort of a statement. True. It's usually pretty obvious when the last piece slots in. All right, so stepping it back now, we got we got to back up. So you 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 haven't got to that scene. You're still kind of stuck, but you realize that obviously you haven't finished your puzzle. So the key to progressing to the final quest, and I think this is pretty clear in the instructions, but it doesn't really tell you what to do, is to take those four guardians, the four extra pieces, the 3D things you built, and read the clues on them, then act on the clue. Now, I'm going to give everyone a pause now so everyone can go give look at it before I give away what this leads to. They're going to take the fossil pieces, figure out the words on them, put them in the right order. Okay, so the guardians, they're going to lead you to the words, box has double bottom, which should lead you to discover that one of the four boxes has a false bottom in it, which I thought was brilliant. And we totally missed it, even in our unboxing videos and showing things off, that one is different. Once you discover that, you are going to find a completely new quest sheet that's two-sided with step-by-step -step instructions how to continue. I found this to be the biggest hurdle people didn't get past. They couldn't figure out what to do with the guardians. They put them together and were like, hey, we have these guardians. They helped us find the princess. And maybe they went in their map and found the princess and did some more things. But this actually walks you through how to do it. And if you've listened this far, either you're smacking your head or you're cursing the fact that you didn't pause or skip. <laughs> Probably true. So let's keep going. You got the new quest sheet. You've done everything on it. And now you got a bunch of mini puzzles in front of you. You, you built new stuff. It's really cool. You took stuff out of your puzzle and built new puzzles. You're still stuck. You haven't seen the screen. What are you missing? Don't worry. This has happened to many people. Next step is to find the clue words on the back of one of the mini puzzles, the specific set of clue words. All right, you found them? All right, now go look at the mini puzzle. One of them is a big evil looking warrior guy with horns and an ax. Your next step is to find him in the puzzle. Find a graphic of him, not a piece, a graphic of the baddie and scan him with the app. The thing the game doesn't tell you at this point, and this was a hang up for us, is that the puzzle needs to be reassembled for this to work. So once you've got your clue words, you're going to put it back together and then try to find the baddie. Now, I honestly don't know if you have to assemble the entire puzzle or just the area where the villain is. We just put everything back together. Go big or go home. All right, if you haven't figured it out now, yet just in case you're still lost and you, you you got it to scan the villain and something popped up and you got to enter a code word and you don't know what to put in what you need to do is you're going to put this code word in and i'm going to start and, and for people who know the code word big tip here i probably should have put before i paused is is keep your phone there keep it pointing there because you're going to see that villain do something and it's very cool uh, the, your your game's going to come to life a bit 
Now, if you did miss the code words, they are on the back of the treasure chest mini puzzle, which has to be upside down. It's on the back, not the colorful part. Now, there is a hint about this on one of the other mini puzzles that says flip over. Flip over is not the code word. That's supposed to be telling you to flip over the chest. Now, we personally missed that, but we built all the mini puzzles upside down because I thought that's the way they were supposed to be because I didn't want all the swirling colors. So we managed to get the clue anyway. Now, sadly, I've had a couple people tell me they had to uninstall and reinstall the app after getting the code words wrong. So if you have entered the code and you didn't get to the end, you may need to reinstall the app to get it to work. We didn't have this problem, but someone else mentioned that. And I'm sure it's device specific. Now, I'm not going to give away the code word. After you enter the code word and you watch the villain escape, you come back and in the next Quezzle, possibly, you should get the you completed Quezzle screen and get to watch your final reward. Well, I hope you enjoyed our review and solution to Quezzle Amazing Cappadocia. <laughs>